for winning. Uh, big news in Delaware. Um, mm -hmm. Are you stunned? A lot of it seems like a lot of Republicans are stunned by the news. I don't know if the word is stunned, but certainly surprised because obviously uh, Mike Castle, I think, had won some very large number of elections. He'd been a popular governor. Of course, this was uh, a true grassroots kind of a situation where people were expressing, in my view, their frustration with Washington and everything associated with it. I faced the same thing in my primary. I faced the same thing in the general. Well, it's sort of interesting because there was a lot of talk about the Democrats didn't realize that there were a lot of unhappy Americans out there because they were surprised by the town hall meetings and by Scott Brown. Well, now it seems like the Republicans are getting a little bit of a shake up in Alaska, Utah, Delaware. It seems like you guys are getting a little bit of a message that Americans are a little bit unhappy. Yes, and pork, uh, which used to be a, a good thing for people's diet, is now turned poisonous. They're against the earmarking and pork barreling spending. And I think that anybody who thinks that the, that incumbency in past service will qualify them for re-election are, are making a serious mistake. It feels like a very different time, though, doesn't it? Oh, it's, ter it's more different than anything that I've ever seen. And it's based, obviously, in the frustration and anger, which is bred by these harsh economic times. Bred of the people in my state. I can't tell you how badly they are hurting. And then they you know, hear about the, quote, summer of recovery, <laughs> and that uh, things are getting better and feel better because it, it could have been worse. Oh, really? <laughs> I mean, so there's real anger and frustration out there, and it's being manifested across the board uh, at Republicans as well as Democrats. Big issue is the Bush tax cuts and whether they'll be extended to everybody, meaning people that make $250,000 a year or more. Um, your position on extending them to all, to everybody or to some? Well, first of all, we shouldn't raise anybody's taxes in this kind of a recession. Second of all, uh, a lot of those people we're talking about, rich at over 250,000, are small business owners. Half of the income of small businesses, not half the small businesses, but half their income would be taxed under this uh, quote, extension of the tax cuts, which really would not be the extension of the tax cuts. They would be an Obama tax increase. I guess the thing that's sort of distressing to me as a, as a taxpayer, as a citizen, is the fact that it's getting sort of, it, it feels like it's getting shoved at us, this issue, whether you're for it or against it, as we come on election day. So we feel a little bit like, at least I do, like I've just been had, because everybody knew it was going to expire. It's not like a big surprise. So this could have been debated with great thought rather than sort of being pushed up against election day. So it feels political rather than substantive to help the country, no matter which way it goes. Listen, everything around here now is totally political. I mean, they are trying to put provisions on the defense authorization bill, something we never did before last year when they put hate crimes on the defense authorization bill. Uh, Harry Reid says he's going to put the DREAM Act on the defense authorization bill. Everything that's being done around here is political, and all it really does is increase the incredible cynicism level uh, in Washington, uh, you know, out in the countryside, about Washington, because. We, where are the people's uh, views? All they're talking about is trying to gain some kind of political advantage because of their difficult situation they find themselves in. And I want to emphasize one other thing. Don't take anything for granted. We will celebrate after the election results are in. Please let's not anticipate a great victory and let's give the American people a positive agenda that they can support. By the way, I was pleased at Kelly Ayotte's uh, election. Very narrow victory. Both, um, incidentally, um, Governor Sarah Palin endorsed. I mean, I don't know why we're sort of looking at her now as sort of a, who does she endorse or who she doesn't, but it's, it's become a national sport to Absolutely. see who, who she has. Um, but it certainly is interesting um, that she's, uh, she was at least last uh, Tuesday night, she got, she got two of her candidates. Yeah, last Tuesday night, uh, she again showed that she can really have an impact on an election, particularly in a smaller state. Um, where you can galvanize a real good turnout. There were not a lot of votes in, in Delaware on Tuesday night, as you know, as compared with other states. But there's no doubt that Sarah Palin has a, a tremendous effect on elections. She doesn't win them all, but everybody knows it matters. Can Christine O'Donnell win in uh, Delaware? Because I, I saw an interview with her, uh, with Carl Cameron, and she said a lot of people are counting her out. Even uh, Carl Rove has said, now that's not going to be a Republican seat. But what she said was, no one thought I could win this. 
So you know, so basically, look out! I can win. I can win the general. Do um, you think she has a shot at winning? I think she uh, will do nothing but go up between now and the election. Whether she can win the election or not, I'm not sure uh, about that. And uh, I don't think there's any doubt that if she can pull off a surprise in the primary as she did, then I'd watch out for her in the general. Uh, you mentioned the Defense Authorization Act. Uh, Senator Reid is going to put on there, at least understand it, uh, don't ask, don't tell. Um, and I know that you have, I don't know if you, you oppose it, but you've put the brakes on it. Um, and maybe let me, I'll let you speak for yourself. Um, what's your, what is your position on this? Let me try to be very clear. I am not opposed to the repeal of don't ask, don't tell. But it's a law that's been in for 17 years. And we need to study the effect on battle effectiveness and morale before we orchestrate or enact a repeal because it really is an important issue uh, given the, the different nature of the military and their lives and the way they serve this country. All four service chiefs, all four of them, have said we need to conduct this thorough study that I am supportive of before we repeal Don't Ask, Don't Tell. Unfortunately, the President of the United States made a political commitment to the gay and lesbian community, and now he has the Secretary of Defense and the Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff who's saying, well, yeah, let's conduct a study on how best to repeal it, not what the effect would be. But so there's never even been that, yeah. has that study been accomplished yet? No, I mean, that's, of course I mean, not. Is that... No, what they're trying to do is because they're worried about the election results in November, that they may not have enough votes to repeal it then, is rush this thing through. In other words, go ahead and say the study has to be completed on how to implement it, and then only the President, the Secretary of Defense, and the Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff would sign off on it, cutting out all four service chiefs who are opposed to repeal unless a complete study is done. Well, so believe me, this is, this is really a serious mistake. And by the way, Harry Reid's piling on to it, uh, uh, no uh, secret holds on bills, and the DREAM Act on a defense authorization bill. Well, the Dream Why? Act is because of his political agenda. The DREAM Act is for the immigrants, yeah. for people here under the, who came here to this who country. Who came here as children, yes. And it may have merits or demerits, depending on how you look at it. But to put it on a defense bill, and so it's really his effort to get reelected. And he's doing that at the expense of this legislation, which is about the men and women who are serving the military. It's really remarkable. Well, you know, it's always, quote, been done that way, that you, you put these different topics in a bill. You've got a bill, and so you shove every single topic if it's, if it's unrelated onto it. And I think the American people are now sort of seeing it. it doesn't make sense to me, to many people. A defense bill should be about defense issues. Um, you know, education should be about education. I, you know, I'm, I'm surprised that you know, there's a more backlash when things sort of get pasted on that are dissimilar, have two different bills, but not the same bill and, and pasted on. Well, interestingly, for many, many years, we never put any extraneous items on the bill because it was so important to defense and we just didn't allow it. Starting last year, Carl Levin and Harry Reid put hate crimes on it, which had nothing to do with it, and now this year they are continuing that. What's going to happen is, over time, is it's going to be like the other authorization bills. They're just not going to go anywhere. And that's terrible because these are the policies that care for the men and women who are serving in the military. So it's very clear. And I say this with all seriousness, Harry Reid and Carl Levin have put their political agenda ahead of the welfare of the men and women who are serving in the military today. Senator, thank you, and um, hope you come back soon. Thank or you. Or hope I come back soon. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, sir.